I came to Kentucky in 1959, in the spring of 59, uh, curious about music, the Kentucky music, which I heard on records and I loved it and always was special to me. But also I was doing an album of uh, songs from the Depression from the 1930s. And I was, I know I was born during that time, but I wanted to know what it's like to live in, you know, in, in the atmosphere of the Depression. Well, America was quite prosperous in 1959, but not East Kentucky. So I had this chance to bring together my interest in music and in the economic thing and the social thing around it. But then I also had this training, it wasn't training, it was a belief in myself as a photographer. He came to Appalachia in the 50s because he was interested in the music of the, of the area, and in particular, Roscoe Holcomb. And so he um, took the lifestyle there, he, people in the coal mines, people in church, the musicians, um, and their beautiful black and white photos. Um, so we ga gained permission from his gallery to print them and have them exhibited. I came to Kentucky as an outsider because I knew I was from outside. But I don't know if that was an advantage or not. Whether people looked at me with suspicion, how could they accept me? How could they accept this guy from New York? I think he came from outside and he was surprised um, at how rich the area was um, and was just fascinated with that and you know, couldn't turn his camera away from it. Well, I went to Yale Art School, but I also took classes in sociology, psychology, anthropology, archaeology. I had done all those things. I knew the questions that those fields asked, so that in a way, my viewpoint might have been looked on a little bit like an anthropologist. However, I was an art student, so I saw all those discipline, disciplines pouring into my art. He's very open, um, he's very human, and I think that that humanness and that openness comes across in his work. Um, so he uses the camera lens to really peer into the soul of the people and the places that he takes. But I did think about how other ways they had been de depicted, like this is poor people, this is victims of, this is you know, suffering, this is whatever it is. I didn't, I didn't want to look at it that way. And I wasn't a journalist, there was no expose for a magazine. So that maybe all that was left was to see what I consider the beautiful truth about their lives and how I could interpret it through my own eyes or through my own camera. Our patients come from all over. Many have not been to Lexington before, so if they see something that reminds them of home, it, it's uncomfortable. Of course, the most reproduced photograph is this one, which, which I think they ran in a local paper also. This is Roscoe Holcomb, who the show and the book and my music is dedicated to. He's a, just a great transcendent musician who never Never wanted to be on the radio, never wanted to make records. He just played music. He was a local guy. And if I hadn't come across him, the world would not have known about him. This is Roscoe Holcomb, an unemployed construction worker who is no one different from his neighbors. He is faced with the same problems that they are. No work and no desire to move out of the mountains. John Cohen is not only a famous photographer, he's uh, and a musician, he's also a filmmaker. Around that time, I was able to buy a car. So then I drove down to Kentucky instead of going by bus. And then I could hear the music and see place after place. I said, how am I gonna communicate this? Well, if I show the image and the music at the same time, well, how can I do that? I'll make a film. He heard the music, but then he also saw the people and, you know, how tough their life was, and he saw that resiliency in the people of Eastern Kentucky, and I think that's what fascinated him and what he's captured. And I think once people start playing their music for you, you have access to something very personal, unless they're, unless they're show performers. But I wasn't looking for show performers, I was looking for people playing their home music. And so that, in a strange way, it gave me great access. I was very interested in what they had to offer. You know, music is hit, hit, a, hit spiritual. You can take us to a small kid, I've noticed it, that can't even sit alone. 
and you pull the strings on some kind of instrument, a fiddle or a banjo or something other like that, and you watch how quick it draws attention to that kid. And he'll, he'll do his best to get a hold of that. And it, it draws the attention of the whole human race. So he wasn't doing it for the exposure or for fame. He was doing it from his heart. And I think that that comes out in all of his work. And Twelve months from the time I started playing with this old fiddler, I learned, I guess, around 400 tunes. He could sing practically every one of them. That's why I say that it is a gift. And I believe, it, I believe that God gave it to me. I'd be down on the ground with my cranky little tape recorder and they'd be sitting there and I'd be kind of kneeling in front of them with my microphone. And in a strange way, that idea of kneeling in front of somebody to hear their personal art, I think that's closer to what it's all about.